without deep reflection one knows from daily life that one exists for other people. I simply enjoy giving more than receiving in every respect, to not take myself nor the doings of the masses seriously, am not ashamed of my weaknesses and vices, and naturally take things as they come with equanimity and humor, many people are like this, and I really cannot understand why I have been made into a kind of idol. There is far too great a disproportion between what one is and what others think one is, or at least what they say they think one is, but one has to take it all with good humor. Of course, understanding of our fellow beings is important, but this understanding becomes fruitful only when it is sustained by sympathetic feeling in joy and in sorrow. The cultivation of this most important spring of moral action is that which is left of religion when it has been purified of the elements of superstition. Desire for approval and recognition is a healthy motive, but the desire to be acknowledged as better, stronger or more intelligent than a fellow being our fellow scholar easily leads to an excessively egoistic psychological adjustment. Many times a day I realize how much my outer and inner life is based upon the labors of my fellow men, both living and dead and how much I must exert myself in order to give in return as much as I have received. It is an irony of fate that I myself have been the recipient of excessive admiration and relevance from my fellow beings, through no fault or merit of my own. The best way to cheer yourself is to cheer somebody else up. The best way to cheer yourself is to cheer somebody else up. The only way to escape the corruptible effect of praise is to go on working.